of the City Council of Jackson, Mississippi, suspending city privilege license of top dollar pawn business accused in assault of patron, patron redeeming pawn. So moved. Second. Moved and properly seconded. Any questions or comments? We received a brief from the city attorney's office. Um, I think it's important that we let the city attorney get on the record about what needs to be said with regards to this item. Monica Joyner, Office of the City Attorney. Our office did provide a response to um, the policy analysts regarding the legal sufficiency of this particular item. Um, I did get a chance to speak with Councilman Stokes in passing on the way in. Um, so without going into uh, additional detail on this item that may adversely affect the city moving forward, I would defer to him as to whether or not he will allow additional time to work on this particular item. Thank you. Uh, let me say this. Yes, sir. Mr. President. Yes, sir. Uh, this legal department is the best legal department in the state of Mississippi. Uh, and I know we bring a whole lot of issues uh, out of voted on by the council and, and put them uh, at work because other people threaten to sue us and everything else. But this is one of those issues, uh, Mr. President, and members of this body, that we have to take a stand. So many times, business people think they own this city or they own a community. Now, these pawn shops have been a problem for a number of years. And I thought about an ordinance to address all pawn shops, and some people said that, that all the pawn shops are not bad. Why would you want to punish the ones that's good? But here you got a pawn shop that's basically stealing, then shooting at people, and we got to do something. Because if we don't do something, then you're going to have a war going on in these black neighborhoods. You know, this was a good young man. Because I know some people, if they had got treated like that, they would have waited and hid and shot them when they came out at night. And you still got people like that in this city who's not going to take this kind of abuse. You've got to make people feel that they are human beings. You can't take their dignity. And when you do people like they did this young man, you're taking this dignity, you're taking this pride, the family hurting everybody else. And they don't have but one place to look, that city hall. And we got to let everybody know that we're going to stand on the side of right. And I know this is going to put our legal department in legal jeopardy, and they're going to have to fight our fight and everything else. But we ain't got nobody else to turn to but our legal department. So I'm going to move forward with this item because we cannot let pawn shops or anybody else just totally disrespect citizens in this city. All these citizens are special, and all of them are important. Thank you. Councilman Stamps. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I do think in this regard we owe um, Mr. Stanley Wesley a, a, a thank you because um, those folks who saw that video um, approached him and he had folks armed to the hilt ready to go shoot the place up and blow it up. And he redirected that energy to a protest, bring awareness, approach city council members, speak out on the issue like he does on several other issues. And if we don't move on something, there's already a war in the streets. I mean, when they had a meeting offline, you know, um, they tell me they had all kinds of folks, folks that would normally be warring against each other were unified in a parking lot. You had drug dealers, thugs, and killers all unified, ready to go blow this place up. And, uh, and when the, the members of Respect Our Black Dolls intervene um, to redirect energy in, a, in, in, a, in, a, in this fashion, in a legal fashion, um, you know, it calmed it down. But if we don't do something that's really aggressive, it's going to be a problem. Well, that problem that already exists is going to be, it's gonna be on, on, on Main Street. Mr. President, yes. I, I yes, just sir. want to make sure I say I thank the chief of police because this police department, when we had issues all across the country about Black Lives Matters, 
and those kind of things. This police department have worked with everybody. I tell people all the time, you got a chief of police that's coming from Wood Street. You got police officers that's coming from Georgetown, Shady, everywhere. If you want to be a police, some of you qualified, they're not going to tell you you can't have a job because who your parents are in the neighborhood you come from. And I'm saying to any business in this city, whether it's pawn shop, anybody else, if you have a problem, you call the police department. You don't take the police matters in your hand like you, you the king of Jackson. If you allow people to start robbing and, and shooting and shooting at people and beating people with that respect for our police department, it's going to be chaos, and you will never have law and order. Thank you. Um, I did hear the constituent um, during public comment speak of legal proceedings where the city attorney's office will work with the DA, which is under the nuisance statute, in trying to close a business. So maybe an alternative would be to allow us to pull documents, evaluate, and determine if there's a better route to go. Because a privilege license is considered a tax. And so in you know, suspending it, you know, I'm not sure that that's going to be the the best way for the council to um, to protect um, the interests that they're pursuing. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Councilman Foote and Councilman Stamps. Did you want to say something? The, um, I, this uh, particular incident, is the, the, all I know about is what I heard at the meeting tonight. I wasn't aware of this before that. Um, but haven't heard that. I mean, it seems like it ought to take the guy to, you know, uh, sue him and take him to, you know, take legal action or criminal action against the the actions if if what he said is true. So I would prefer to pursue through, um, as um, Attorney jo uh, Joyner said, legal action first before we try to preempt it with administrative action. So thank you, Councilman uh, Tim. Did you have something to say, Councilman Tim? Yeah. I Listen to the conversation that the young man still hadn't gotten his item back. That really concerns me. And then I was told that in some practice, like you, you pawn the weapon, but they put something else on the receipt. All that's out there. You know, what's going on in these pawn shops? So. We need to have some kind of uh, meeting to try to find out really what's, what the facts are. And, and, and whatever legal course that we need, uh, uh, we, we, we need to take action. Uh, business of, of, uh, are uh, open in the neighborhoods to serve the public, not to abuse the public. And I don't expect anybody to be abused, but but, sir, thank you. Sir, thank you, Councilman Stamps. Um, thank you, Mr. President. I, I want some clear direction. As a city, we should have some clear-cut guidelines of how to close a business. Every time we have a nuisance business in our neighborhood, it's always we got to go around this way and that way. And do a, As a city council person, I would like from the legal department mm -hmm. a step-by-step this is what I need to do to close a business. So when I have a nefarious business and I have a case or several cases, then I can say, don't worry, give me 60 days as I execute the process and you will be closed. I don't believe that we should um, give the responsibility of governing to the constituents because they give it to us. If something happens in a community, in a, in a business, and we say, well, you go sue the business. Well, that's no, no, that, that's what we're, that's part of governing. We're supposed to do that. We shouldn't give private citizens and say, you go get a lawyer, sue them, and y'all work out in private court and civil actions. I believe as a city, we should be able to push our finger on issues and have the full um, power of a city to the point where, where business owners would, um, would sh shake in their boots when they say I'm finna call the city because the city should have the power to say you're shutting down. I know, you know, 50 years ago, the mayor said you close those doors, the doors were closed. 
And um, I would like to execute government in the same fashion to govern um, in the same manner because I'm not really afraid of lawsuits and things like that. We've got these lawsuits for this foolish stuff. Let's go get some lawsuits for some real matters that are going to affect real folks because I bet they go broke before we do. And uh, and I think that's how we should move forward. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any further questions? Come, Ms. Councilman Priester. You know, I, you said an interesting point a minute ago, Councilman Stamps, and I, I, I do want to go back to it. I do want to thank Mr. Wesley and the work he's done on this. I think that's very important. And I think one of the things that is fundamental for a functioning city is that you have organizations like Respect Our Black Dollars that hold people's feet to the fire, that boycott, that, you know, I know a lot of people that shop. And what y'all have done has made people say, I'm not going to shop there. Um, and that's critical. I feel horrible that I have to be in a position that might even be remotely construed as, you know, not being supportive mm -hmm. of what y'all are doing because I am fully supportive of what y'all doing. At the same time, I, I think the legal department has told the truth that if we really want to win this, and make sure that if what we need to do is close this business down, get them closed down. I think this would be a Trump move and would shoot ourselves in the foot rather than get what we're trying to do accomplished. Um, so I'm, if we're not going to give extra time to the city legal department to navigate the path and pay and do what we have appointed her and her team to do. I'm, I'm not going to be in, I'm not going to vote yes for this, even though I can tell you I'm not going to put my dollars over there anymore. And I'm fully supportive of, because I watched the video, this, that wasn't the right way to treat any person. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. But I just, I just wanted to, regardless of how the vote goes down on this, I wanted to make it clear um, that you know, and maybe it's just because I'm a lawyer um, that I've I've got a different perspective on this. But I I think we there are other things that we can do, um, and I think this is a time for us to you know cut measure twice and cut once. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you for your, your comments, Council. Appreciate that. Definitely um, important and valued. Um, and as we go through this process, it re reminds me of when we first came on council and we were settling a lawsuit where we paid uh, a strip club owner and some strippers um, because um, former Mayor Milton closed a business down um, his way. And, um, and we had to pay thousands of, uh, I guess it was damages for lost wages to dancers in the strip club. And so, you know, I don't want to end up enriching the very people who are feeding off the pain of the people in the first place. I don't want to go down that road where they turn around and, you know, uh, and, and, and we don't navigate it properly. So I do agree that something needs to be done. And, um, and Mr. Stokes, can we wait two weeks just to get some def some, some direction, <coughs> clear direction? Because uh, that's, to Mr. me, President, I think it's be good enough time. Uh, Mr. President, uh, the difference between what Frank Milton did and what we're doing today is that that was not a vote to close the nightclubs. Uh, the strip clubs. So we're doing, okay. uh, we're taking a vote today and there's an appeal process where anybody aggrieved uh, within 10 days can make an appeal to the law that we're trying to pass. You know, this is what we have to do. Once we lose the confidence of the citizens in this community, we're not going to get it back. Everybody knows. 
that it was wrong what that pawn shop did. And you cannot sit in a black majority city with a black mayor and majority black council and allow this to happen. You can't do it. Now, whether the legal department, and I, and I agree, we'll fight, but this legal department is good. You don't know what decision a judge would make. We might be trotting new ground, but one thing we know is that the only way you can get close to closing this business is through the privilege license. Even though it's a tax, there's no other way that I see because you must have a privilege license to operate. Every business in this city must have a privilege license to operate. If it was any other way, then I support it. Now, I don't say that once we pass this with the privilege license, that legal don't have to stop doing it the other way that they want to do. That's fine, too. But we got to do something. We went to court and closed some noose and nightclubs, and they opened right back. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that we can do to make these citizens know if you're poor or rich, this city is going to stand behind you. And you've got to send a message to these criminals who's in business that you cannot mistreat these citizens in this city. Now, if a court say that they can, well, let a court make that decision. Let a judge. But as council members and people representing the citizens in this city, we need to say we behind ourselves 100 percent. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Um, I say this is a tough one. Uh, it's tough one for, for several reasons. One of which is is I agree 100 percent that you know I, I support I support um, you know closing the business down. I do want to make sure it's done the right way, right? And um, you know, Mr. Wesley, I mean, you, you've organized on several fronts, and we appreciate you. And I want to go and be the dead horse because all this has been said before. Um, I just want to make sure it's done the right way because what I don't want to happen is, you know, similar to what Councilman Stamp said, you know, it's, we come back, we pay. We have to pay. So, so my question is: What's the process for revoking a privilege license? That uh, Monica John, also city attorney, that I don't know right off okay. hand. Um, and so, of course, we can research that as well um, and get back to council on that. But as far as statutorily, I'm not. I'm not completely sure, and I don't want to provide. No, the, I understand. You know, inaccurate I understand. information. No, from 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 history, we dealt with the yeah we dealt with the strip club, we dealt with the upper level and several others, but we came out on the losing side of that property. We had we we had, we, we had to end up some money. Well, um, with the gentlemen's club, yes, the city did have to um, pay some damages. However, with other clubs that we did proceed through the court system to close, right. um, actually we did prevail on a number of them, and the court would stipulate what they would have to do in order to reopen. And so they would have to do those things, and we would have to go back to court, and they would have to show that they've actually, you but, know, but we, we, performed. We, 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 we went down the legal Mm -hmm. Well, we used one legal option. Mm -hmm. So you have various options that you can utilize. And so, you know, I, I can't sit here and say what the right or wrong thing, yeah, right. you know, of course, is to do. But we'll do well, whatever I, we need to do. Well, I like the idea of wait, wait, wait two weeks and let you all do the in-depth in research. So whatever action we take, we have full support of our legal department. Councilman Stamps, and then we'll... So just like with all orders, if uh, someone disagrees with something we vote for, mm -hmm. they can go to um, court within a certain amount of time to appeal something that we did, just like a zoning matter or a planning matter that we vote on every month. If you don't like it, then you can go right over to Chancellor Court 
an appeal. Circuit, to that. and you can file a bill of exceptions. Yes. Right. Um, it's important, also, I guess, just for full transparency, um, to know that um, the business is represented by counsel. They did submit a letter today, um, of course, as Councilman Stokes alluded to, you know, threatening some kind of process if they're not given due process and a hearing in order to be heard prior to their privilege license being um, revoked. And so that's something else that, that will be potentially on the table as well. But that could also be handled through, I guess, the appeals process if the council desires to head down that route. So if they didn't but, come to the council meeting to air their concerns and public comments about an item that's on the agenda, they have uh, have walked away from their um, ability for due process because it was noticed on the agenda. It was well, put in the paper. So it was put in the paper. So they they had an opportunity to sign up for the item prior to voting and discuss it before what I, council. What I don't want us to do is to continue to discuss this matter at length in an open meeting because everything that's being discussed can be utilized against the city at some point in time and so i don't want to go down the route of whether or not they receive due process whether you know things of that nature because you know honestly if you look at it more than likely they probably were not because they did not receive actual notice date time certain of you know the action to be heard um, directly through service of the service and they also submitted a letter um, asking that this particular item be withdrawn so I do not want us to go down the route of you know legal theories in this open meeting so however the council decides to proceed the legal department will handle it accordingly yes ma'am thank you um, you know, from my perspective, I 100% support closing the, closing the business down. I want to make sure it's done the right way, and I want to make sure we have a sound legal strategy moving forward. Um, so, Councilman Stokes, I'm going to request – I support you and I support this item. I do want to hear more from legal to make sure that when we do it, we do it the right way and it's done. We don't have to come back and we don't have a case where, you know, we close it this week and two weeks later it's back open. It's closed for good. Mr. President, I – I've been on these councils long enough to realize I don't get offended one way or the other, however anyone vote. Yes, sir. But somewhere down the line, even if we hold this two weeks, these people are going to still threaten legal action and everything else. Even if we tell them, we'll come on, we'll, we'll have a hearing on your privilege license, they're going to still come with, well, you can't do this. You're the governing authorities for this city. Mm -hmm. You have authority to do quite a lot of things to make sure that the health welfare and safety of this city is adhered to. That's all in the law. Health, welfare, and safety. Now, how is this man safe when they beating him and then shooting at him? You, you, I, I guarantee you, you let a black man go in Madison and beat somebody white and shoot at them and see don't something happen. But you letting them come in Jackson and do this and don't nothing happen? It's a shame on us. So thank you. Any further questions or comments? Councilman Priester? I just want to know if the police have arrested these individuals and what are police going to do? Because that's another thing that I think should be done. Yeah, I agree too. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, no question comments? All in favor? All opposed? All abstaining? Adam Dines, um, next item, please. What, what was the vote, Mr. President? Uh, the vote was two, yeah, two, three, one. Two, three, one, okay, thank you. If I may, yes, um, would it be the pleasure of the council for our office to meet with Mr. Wesley um, and the individual, the police chief, and start, you know, gathering information to proceed with um, looking at possible closure of the business? Oh, yeah, yes, definitely. I mean, I think the general um, consensus on the council is that the business should be closed. We want to make sure it's done the right way. Um, and so we're looking to your office to take the lead expeditiously to see what we can do 
hopefully by the next council meeting, um, and clerk, if you don't mind making a note by the next council meeting, we can have this discussion in, in closed session mm -hmm. so we know what the legal strategy is. We can move forward very quickly. So we will meet with those individuals as well as the DA because he has to be involved in the process. So yes, we will proceed with it. Okay, that. sounds good. Can we go ahead and make sure that's on the, uh, on the next agenda? We will go to public comments, give those uh, folks who were not on the agenda. Um, and Councilman Stamps, could you? Thank you. Yes. Quickly, Mr. President, thank you for the time. Um, and I would like a list of, uh, of the things necessary to close a business down, whatever support and documentation may be necessary mm -hmm. to do so. Um, if I can get that, that would be great because I, gotta, I have a list of businesses around town that I want to put on the agenda already that needs to be shut down um, so we can start to clean our city up because we, we got some folks who are doing bad business, but we also got to guard against uh, folks who want to make Jackson great again. Well, that would be very fact. That would be very fact specific, um, and so we will provide you the information you so desire, as well as documentation, examples, etc. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Ms.